This is an extra lesson, 1.13, about exponents and base numbers. We learned in video 1.4 that a base is a number used as a repeated factor. And the exponent tells us how many times we should use the base as a factor. So the 2 is the base, and the 3 is the exponent. This is telling us to multiply 2 times 2 times 2. We have 3 times. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. 2 to the third power is equal to 8. Any number can be a base number. If we have the second power of 5, or 5 to the second power, it's equal to 5 times 5. We have two factors of 5. That's equal to 25. 10 to the second power is equal to 10 times 10. That's equal to 100. 12 to the second power is equal to 12 times 12, that's equal to 144. And 100 to the second power is equal to 100 times 100, that's equal to 10,000. Exponents are read as ordinal numbers. That would be like 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and so on. It's like the names of a grade, 1st grade, 2nd grade, 3rd grade, those are ordinal numbers. We can write repeated factors as a base and exponent to save time and our pencils. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 can be ten condensed to 3 to the 4th power. And if we have 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, that can be condensed to 10 to the seventh power. We have seven factors of 10. When we have a two with a little zero exponent, it's equal to one. We read it as the zero power of two, or we can read it as two to the zero power. When we have a two with a little one exponent, it's equal to one factor of two, so it's just a two. We can read it as the first power of two, or two to the first power. When the 2 has a 2 exponent, it means we have 2 factors of 2, 2 times 2. That's equal to 4. And the second power of 2, or 2 to the second power. We can also read it as the square of 2, or 2 squared, and I'll explain that in a second. If we have a 2 with a little 3 exponent, then we have 3 factors of 2. That would be 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. That would equal 8. It can be read as the third power of 2 or as 2 to the third power. We can also read it as 2 cubed, or the cube of 2, and I'll explain that coming up also. We learned about area in fourth grade math. The area of a square is found by multiplying a side times a side. So there's 4 on this side, and because it's a square, all the sides will have 4. We can find the area of this square by multiplying 4 times 4. And we can write it as 4 to the second power because we have two factors of 4. We can write the formula for the area of a square as side squared to mean side times side, or s to the second power. This is why we can read any base number that has a 2 exponent as the square of that number or that number squared. 4 squared, or the square of 4, or 4 to the second power. Now we're just finishing chapter 1 in 5th grade math, but in chapter 11, we'll learn about volume as the measure of the amount of space a solid figure occupies using cubic units. The area of a cube is found by multiplying its length times its width times its height. So if there's 10 cubes going across this way, 10 cubes going up for its height, and 10 cubes going back, we can multiply 10 times 10 times 10. That means there's 1,000 unit cubes. And because we have three factors of 10, we can write it as 10 to the third power. That's equal to 1,000. And this is why we can read any base number that has a three exponent as the cube of that number or that number cubed. So this would be the cube of 10 or 10 cubed. It's also 10 to the third power, isn't it? When a base number is squared, 
written with a two exponent, it does not mean the base is doubled. It also does not mean we are multiplying by two. Two to the second power is equal to four may seem as though we computed two times two and multiplied the base to the exponent, but we didn't. So consider five to the second power. That's five times five, that's equal to 25. It's not five times two equals 10. It's how many times we use that number as a factor. How about nine? to the second power, that's nine times nine, that's equal to 81. It's not nine times two equals 18. It's how many nines we have as a factor. So the two to the second power just happens to fall that way, but that's not what we're doing, okay? We're doing the base times the base. And the exponent is telling us how many times to use the base as a factor. We can solve equations or simplify expressions that contain exponents by writing the factors. We have two to the third power plus five to the second power. Well, that means two times two times two plus five times five. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. So this is equal to eight. Five times five is equal to 25. That means we have eight plus 25. It's equal to 33. If we have 10 to the second power minus 5 to the second power, that means we have 10 times 10 minus 5 times 5. That means we have 100 minus 25. That's equal to 75. When simplifying numerical expressions, we follow the order of operations. And we've learned in the last couple of videos that we always start with parentheses first, and we solve the innermost grouping symbols first. In this case, it's the parentheses. The orange ones are brackets. So we solve within the parentheses first, 10 plus three is equal to 13. Next thing we do is exponents. And we have an exponent here. We need to subtract three to the second power. That's three times three, that's nine. Now we solve within the brackets. We have 13 minus nine, that's equal to four. And now we multiply. There's no addition or subtraction, so we just do the multiplication. Two times four is equal to eight. Sometimes it can be confusing to follow the order of operations. We know we're supposed to do within parentheses first, but look, how can we have four to the second power minus six and do this unless we do the exponent first? So in this case, using common sense, in order to subtract six, we are gonna have to do the exponents first. So remember to use common sense. The exponents are inside the parentheses, so we simplify the exponents first. Four to the second power means four times four, that means 16. Now we have 16 minus six, and we can solve within the parentheses. Here we have three to the third power, that means three times three times three, that's Three times three is nine, and nine times three is 27. Now we can subtract 27 minus 17. 16 minus six is 10. 27 minus 17 is 10. Now we solve within the brackets, 10 plus 10 is 20. And remember, as we spoke in the last couple of videos, when a number is right up next to a grouping symbol with nothing in between there, just the number and then the grouping symbol, we multiply. That's three times 20, it's equal to 60. In sixth grade math, we'll learn about negative numbers. Negative numbers are less than zero. You might have heard on the weather that it's 10 below zero in a very cold place. That would be a negative 10. In eighth grade, we'll learn that an exponent can be a negative number. Here we have 10, to the second power, we have two factors of 10, so that's 10 times 10, that's equal to 100. But if we have a 10 to a negative two power, a negative second power, it actually can be written with a one as a numerator and a positive two exponent as the denominator. So we would have it written like this, and this means we have two factors of 10 for the denominator, so we have a one for our numerator and 10 times 10 for our denominator. That's equal to one one hundredth. 
So 10 to the negative second power is equal to 1 one hundredth. Here we have 2 to the third power. That means we have three factors of 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 2 to the third power is equal to 8. But if we have 2 to the negative third power, we can write it as a fraction with a 1 as a numerator and 2 to the third power, and it's a positive 3 exponent because it's in the denominator. That means we have three factors of 2 for our denominator. We have 2 times 2 times 2. We still have 1 for the numerator. That means 2 to the negative third power is equal to 1 eighth. So I don't expect you to memorize what I just showed you. I'm just trying to let you know what's going to happen as you get into 6th, 7th, and 8th grade in middle school. And you're going to see negative exponents. They do exist, OK? In our next lesson, we're going to be moving to chapter 2. We're going to learn how to divide whole numbers. In the first lesson, we're going to place the first digit in a long division quotient. And I hope I'll see you there. I'm proud of you for watching math videos. Bye.